Hello. We're looking at the self-portrait by Albrecht Dürer, which was painted in 1500. And it is truly an amazing, powerful painting, which um, really is the first of its kind. Dürer travelled during the 1490s to Italy and, and was influenced very much so by the artists there. Um, when he returned to Nuremberg, he opened a workshop and concentrated on producing woodcut prints. Uh, he, he focused on engravings and prints rather than oil painting, uh, possibly because of the ease of production and also very much so because of the commercial success of selling prints to the European market. He was well known for his prints all over, all over Europe. He did make uh, some earlier self-portraits, um, 1493 and 1498. And in both of these, he exhibits a sort of fashionable, um, uh, fashionable dress, clothing, hairstyle, um, presenting himself rather as a talented, dandyish court painter. Um, notice, by the way, in the uh, 1498 portrait, the um, landscape through the window. But the self-portrait of 1500 is very, very different to these earlier paintings. Here the uh, colour palette is much more mature um, with a, a restrained use of browns and creams. It's much more in the Netherlandish style of Van Eyck and Hans Membling. But there are also fundamental departures from Netherlandish portraiture. Dürer looks out of the painting and is front-facing and symmetrical. At this time, this form of painting was much more reserved for paintings of Christ, and in particular, a form of um, Christ called Salvator Mundi, Saviour of the World and an even older Byzantine iconic depiction known as the Pantocrator, meaning almighty or all-powerful. So Dürer was painting himself as Christ. Why would he do this? Well, he belonged to a group called the Humanists, who had a passion for the arts, literature and science, as well as rethinking religious Christian devotion. A popular humanist movement at this time was to imitate Christ, and Dürer might have been doing this visually in his self-portrait. Let's look at the painting itself. The expensive coat he's wearing is lined with marten fur. This is fur from a cat-sized animal that was uh, native to Northern Europe. Martin fur was also used in making paintbrushes. Dürer's hand grips the fur between the fingertips, almost forming a brush, suggesting the rising image of the artist who is wearing the coat of a nobleman or a scholar. There are also interpretations of the shape of the hand, the thumb and the first finger forming a letter A and the middle finger the letter D. This creates Duran's initials AD, which appear as his famous monogram to the left of the painting. This could also be interpreted as 1500 Anno Domini rather than Albrecht Durer. The portrait also defines a vertical axis from Durer's forehead, eyes and hand the, monochrome, the monogram on the left and the inscription on the right float in the darkness and add to the portrait's mystical symbolism or divine sense. The jacket sleeves are of a fenestella design with undercloth visible through a slash, very fashionable in Italy in the late 1400s. Christ in contemporary clothes might seem rather unusual. The arm 
itself is foreshortened, giving perspective, which is emphasised by the design of the hand. The level of detail is stunning. I give one example. We know the light source is from a window. A close-up of the left eye shows the mullion and transom reflected in the iris. To summarise, this is a real person occupying real space. The face confronts the viewer and the stare is unwavering and bears down on us with conviction. The figure has an uncomfortable sense of emotional pensiveness. The inscription on the right is in Latin, not German, and uses gold paint. And it says, Albrecht Dürer of Nuremberg painted myself thus with indelible or everlasting colours at the age of 28 years old. The Latin word for own, propriorus, can also be interpreted as immortal. <laughs>